Hello, Kip One Primary. This is Mr. Jennings, and this is the start of our excellence class. Shout out to all the friends who have been sending in their I Have a Dream speeches. They look awesome. Can't wait till we have a large video with all of our dreams put together. And remember, a lot of our friends are winning prizes every week, so make sure that you're sending them in so you are in the drawing to win a prize as well. Hope values. Our hope values are honor, optimism, perseverance, enthusiasm, and love. This month, we're still focusing on love. So let's see what love means to us. So love, love is the value for this month. I want you guys to be thinking, what does love mean to you? I'm gonna give you guys a second to think, what does love mean to you? All right, lock it in, three, two, one. Three, two, one, it's locked in. What does love mean to you? You might have your own answer if you couldn't think of anything and Mr. Jennings will tell you his. Love means to me that someone cares about you and they want you to succeed. And that will be how people love you. And that is how I um, love you guys. I care for you guys. And I want you all to be successful and I will do whatever that needs to be done um, to make sure that you guys feel loved and that you guys are successful. Why is showing love important? Showing love is important because people need those positive reminders to help them succeed. Everyone needs someone to make sure that they are doing the things that they, they need to do and also getting the things that they need to get. How do you feel when someone loves or show love to you? I'm gonna let you guys think about that question. How do you feel when someone loves or show love to you? Think about it, get ready, go. Lock in your answers, three, two, one. Three, two, one. So you should have your answers in. When Mr. Dennis, uh, when someone loves me or shows love to me, I feel happy. I feel like I need to do something to show love as well. And I move on by showing love to that day. It excites my day and it makes me um, feel super happy and super loved. So we're going to read a passage at the bottom. I'm going to read this all together. So make sure that you are repeating after me. Love. I love myself because I am beautiful and wonderfully made. I love myself because there is nobody in the world like me. I was made to be who I am and I love who I am. I love my community because we are one team and one family. I love everyone because our differences make us unique and our similarities connect us to one another. So this is February and in February we are, we've been cele celebrating Black History Month. And these are just a couple of figures that you guys may have learned about so far, but we're going to keep on learning as we go. And you don't just have to learn about people um, who are black in Black History Month. You can use any month, any day to always educate yourself, to learn about different people because um, they have done some really important, really valuable things. Learning objectives for this lesson. In this lesson, Kipsis will be able to understand the relationship between membership and community and will be able to identify ways in which communities define membership. Kipsis will also be able to understand how membership in a particular group can influence how people view those outside of the group. Kipsis will be able to learn about Ruby Bridges. Kipsis will be able to understand that education is the key to success. So I know that education is going to be the key to your success, whether you are um, learning how to fix cars, whether you're learning how to put out a fire, whether you are learning how to um, make our community safer, whether you're learning to teach other people, whether you are learning to learn to fly a helicopter or an airplane, no matter what that thing is, you need to educate yourself so you're able to learn how to do those things to be successful. Vocabulary to know in this lesson. We wanna all say these vocabulary words together, equality or equal. This means treat it fairly. A good thing. Inequality, not treated fair. That's bad. Inequality means not being treated fair. Segregation means split up. Segregation means split up. And that usually is split up between races. Desegregated means not split. So when we segregate, they're split. And when we're desegregated, we're not split. So um, when we're segregated, that means that people are split up based on their different races and desegregated mean that all races are together. And finally, the word is race. Race is what a person looks like. And we're gonna break this word down um, in a different way, uh, different ways. I know that it's a homonym, which means that race can mean multiple different things like having a race in your street or um, 
having a race, which is what a person looks like, which is what we're going to be talking about. We're going to first figure out the first sound that we hear in race. The first sound that you hear in race is R. Very good. And that's the letter R. I'm going to put this word together. So you have R, ace, R, ace. Everybody with me? R, ace. And I know R, ace makes the word race. Very good. When I put R, ace together, it makes the word race. Last week, we learned about two inventions that Garrett Morgan invented. I want you guys to think, what are those two inventions that he invented? He had two inventions that we looked at last week that Garrett Morgan invented. I'm gonna give you guys a couple of seconds to think, what are those two inventions? Hmm. <music> Now that you got that in, you're going to lock it in. Three, two, one. Shh. Let's see who's right. Those two adventures. Shout them out so I can hear you guys. Uh, a lot of people got one. I want to hear two. What two things did Garrett Morgan invent? All right, let's see. He made the traffic light, the three traffic light, and a gas mask. What we're going to do is read a book that has different inventions, not that Garrett Morgan made, but that we might see every day. Have you thanked an inventor today? This is by Patrice McLaurin. The illustration, which means the drawings, are done by Dion Wayne. Let's see what this book is about. You see inventions. They make our lives much easier, and they also make our lives more fun. So we should thank the inventors who invent great inventions, for without them, we may not get anything done. Like for instance, when your mom wakes you up in the morning to let you know that it's time to go to school, you stretch and yawn, rub the corners of your eyes and probably wipe away last night's drool. <laughs> Thank you, Benjamin Banneker. That's when you happen to glance over at your clock and realize that you're running a bit late. Well, you wouldn't know that were it not for Benjamin Banneker, he invented the first clock in the United States. So you put on cl clothes and you rush into the bathroom. You wash your face and brush your teeth, then brush your hair. Well, you should thank Lita Newman for part of your morning grooming as the modern day hairbrush was her awesome idea. Thank you, Lita Newman. Thank you, John Standard. Afterwards, you called into the kitchen, kitchen for, the bre for breakfast. This morning it's cereal with fruit and wheat toast. Well, thank goodness for John Standard. Improve the refrigerator because hot milk with your cereal is pretty gross. And when you're on your way to school, whether you're a bus rider, a car rider, or you walk, you have to thank Garrett Morgan for the traffic light. Otherwise, none of our streets would be safe to cross. Then after you settle into your classroom and you've taken out your supplies because you're, because you're such a great scholar, please remember to show your love to Mr. John Love for his invention was none other than the pencil sharpener. Thank you, John Love. Now, as much as I know that you love to learn, you will admit that sometimes lunch is your favorite time of the day. Well, you can thank John Robinson for your lunchbox but for what's inside it, it's your mom that you need to thank. Thank you, John Robinson, for creating that lunchbox. And what does mom usually pack in your lunchbox? Tasty snacks that make your belly go yum, like peanut butter made by popular George Washington Carver or potato chips invented by George Crump. Thank you, George Washington Carver, and thank you, George Crump. Fast forward, the school day is now over. It's been a long one and you're happy to be home. You check the mailbox invented by P. Downing. Then chill in front of air conditioner invented by Frederick Jones. Thank you, Frederick Jones for air conditioning. Plus your teacher didn't assign any homework. So you decide to play a few games on the cell phone 
Well, if it wasn't for Henry Sans Sampson's gamma electric cell, believe it or not, there would be no cell phone. Thank you, Henry Sampson. And these are just a few awesome inventions. There are uh, countless other ones that I didn't even mention, like the doorknob invented by O. Dorsey or a type of guitar invented by Robert Fleming. Sarah Boone invented the ironing board and Thomas Stewart invented the mop. Lonnie Johnson invented the super soaker and W.A. Martin, he improved the lock. So now here's what I want you to do. I'd like for you to take a moment or two and ponder over how life would be if these inventions weren't created for you. Then as you lie on your bed this evening and you think about how your day was spent, was spent, don't forget to thank an inventor. Then dream about what would you like to invent? So from that book, we've seen a lot of different inventions that uh, Black people created that we use every day. And some of those things, I know that you heard before, like Gary Morgan's traffic light, but some of the different things that you didn't, like Sarah Boone's ironing board or um, George Washington Carver's peanut butter. So there's different things all around your home and all around your day that uh, Black people. So moving on, today we're going to be learning about a time called Jim Crow and what some of those uh, some of the things that happened during this time. So Jim Crow wasn't a person. This was a time in our history that often meant um, separate but equal. So we're going to see some ways to see how uh, things were separate. And then we're going to be thinking about, was it equal? So it wasn't a person. It was a time where people used the term separate but equal to segregate Black people from white people. This was a time where the 13th Amendment was recently passed that abolished slavery. Abolish slavery means that there should be no slavery anymore. Let's see what people went through who were Black who lived through Jim Crow, which wasn't that long ago. So a lot of your grandparents or great-grandparents might have seen the end of Jim Crow. They might have been young around your age, but they have an idea of what Jim Crow kind of looked like. So what were some of the ways that segregation um, was um, apparent during Jim Crow? So this is one way that they show separate but equal. So they had separate things, but they said that they were equal. For example, here we have two water fountains. These are separate water fountains. There's water fountain one and there's water fountain two. Which one of these water fountains do you think looks a little better, might have a little better water? You might be choosing the first one. It's bigger. Um, this The second one is really small. And oftentimes, um, they didn't clean these things. So the white people would be able to use this water fountain. And then the Black people would have to use this little water fountain. So that's why you see white on this side and you see colored on the other. So um, colored is a, a word that we kind of don't use to describe people um, who are Black anymore. It, it kind of matters how you say it. Um, but this was when people said like people of color, this is what they used to segregate different um, black people and different white people. So um, black people would have to use this small one while white people use this one. And they would often not clean the colored one. And they often um, didn't have cold water or sometimes it didn't even work at all. So do you think this was equal for white people to have this water fountain that was clean, that was probably had better water and black people having a water fountain that sometimes worked, it might be dirty. Does that seem equal to you? No. So that is inequality. That is not equal. Did the same for restaurants. So this was a restaurant that um, said whites only. So that means that black people weren't able to go into these places. And just like the water fountain, if you were going into these white places or if a white person, Oh, I'm going to show you guys this one again. So if you were a black person and you decided that you would sneak and use the white um, water fountain, you could be in trouble. People would try to hurt you or you could even end up going to jail because you're not supposed to use the things that were for white people, which again is not fair. That is inequality. That is not fair and not okay. So moving back on to restaurants, the this is a restaurant that was predominantly for white people. So only white people could go in there. If you were a black person and you, and you tried to go in there, they would not let you in. 
And a lot of places they had a black people interest. So black people would either have to go through an alley or go through a different entrance. Um, so white people wouldn't see them. They had to kind of sneak to get the food or different things that they wanted. They couldn't go to their front door. Does that seem equal to you guys? No, that is inequality. So this was something else that happened during this time that was not so long ago. Next, the bus. So we've all heard about Rosa Parks and Rosa Parks not giving up her seat at the front of the bus. So during Jim Crow, um, which was still the time where people wanted to be separate but equal, but so far, has it been equal? No way, Jose, it has not been equal. They've been treating black people Un, uh, not equal. They've been going through inequality and that is not fair. So it, it has not been fair. Same with the buses. The Black people, they often had to either go to the back of the bus or give their seat up to a white person and then either stand up or go to the back of the bus. They were not allowed to sit if a white person wanted to sit down. Does that seem equal? So if you were sitting down and someone said, get up because I look like this. Does that seem like it's equal? No. And then that was Miss Rosa Parks' um, conundrum during the time. That was her problem. Um, she didn't get up and she fought for her rights and she fought for equality. Schools and education. Schools were also segregated. So if you were black, you had to go to a school, uh, one school. And if you were white, you had to go to a different school. Um, and these black and white schools were not together. They were not um, the, the segregated. They, they were not desegregated, they were segregated. So the black people often had smaller or not so nicer schools while white people had like bigger, larger schools. They had like better books and better equipment and better materials while black people would get those hand-me-downs. So things that either were, were old, um, were not as good as the white people. Does that seem equal to you? No, that's not equal as well. So we need to take and make sure that we're taking um, advantage of the education that we're receiving because um, in history, black people weren't able to receive that, that education. It's not been, it hasn't been that long since black people were able to go to schools and receive an education. So you guys are in a perfect spot to make sure that you are always learning to grow your brain because your ancestors in 100 and 150 years ago, they weren't able to get that education that you're able to receive right now. So, we're gonna learn about a young girl. Uh, well, she, she's young when, when we're first gonna introduce her and her name is Ruby Bridges. And Ruby Bridges was around you guys' age and uh, she was a little younger than some and the same age as um, a lot of you guys. She was going into that first grade and Ruby Bridges was one of the first, or sorry, she was the first African-American student to be in a desegregated school in the South. She was all by herself going to an elementary school in the South. During this time, whites did not want black people in their schools. This was a time when laws were changing and we were saying no more segregation. Ruby Bridges was very courageous to join this school and was one of the pillars to helping schools become um, desegregated everywhere. So she was around six years old and, she, and the courage that she had to have to be in this school was immense. Um, she went there and she um, had to have people, these people around here are people who had to protect her from the white people um, that were at the school. And I know that they're white, but so, so know that like some white people were doing good, but other white people were not doing so good. So there were white people who were protecting her in this picture, but also knowing that black people and African-Americans, we were all for Ruby Bridges to be successful because without her, uh, we would still probably um, be waiting for the next person after her to be joining a white school. And that is not an easy job when people are doing different bad things to you, which we're going to see in a minute. So, we're gonna talk a little bit about the Little Rock Nine. So Little Rock Nine, these were nine students um, who went to school together, um, to a high school together um, in about 1957 in Arkansas. Um, they were some of the first people to go to a, um, a white high school and they were also courageous, just like Ruby Bridges. And we're gonna see um, how they were, were courage, courageous. First, we're gonna say some of their names. So say their names with me, Gloria Ray. Terrence Roberts, Melba Patillo, Elizabeth Eckford, 
Ernest Green, Minnie Jean Brown, Jefferson Thomas, Carlotta Walsh, and Thelma Mothershed. So these were people who first went to a, uh, some of the first people to go to a high school that had mostly whites. And we're gonna see how they were treated and thinking about Ruby Bridges and what she had to go through to also be in a school in being a younger age, because she was only about six years old, she went there right after kindergarten, and to see how they, these white people were treating black people in schools at this time. But the Arkansas Gazette at that time uh, indicated that the Brown decision was going to change the face of the South forever. I remember those words. And I thought to myself, good, because I think the face of the South ought to change. I will not force my people to integrate against their will. The governor of the state, Orville Faubus, decided that he was going to use Central as his point of resistance. None of us of the nine anticipated that the resistance would be as strong as it was. The night before we were to go to school, the governor called out the Arkansas National Guard, unbeknownst to us. Uh, and when we appeared at, at Central the first day, Sealed off. the National Guard was there to bar our entrance and let white students go into the school. What it was like, it was rejection that uh, I had never experienced like that. It seemed to me that if they were going to all of this trouble to keep me out, there was something bigger than my simply going to class. Only when we got home from school that day did we realize what an ordeal personal ordeal Elizabeth had gone through and that she certainly faced more of the mob directly. I, I always applaud the fact that she was able to keep both her composure and try to figure out how to get out of that. We started school on the 25th of September. President Eisenhower sends 500 troops of the 101st Airborne Division of the United States Army. It was a terrific feeling that President of the United States would send troops to escort us into school. I, I didn't know what was gonna happen after that. It was like going to war every day. Uh, you had students who tried to use as much verbiage as they could to intimidate us. We had threats and uh, comments that uh, you know we would be killed for all of us. We decided that this was uh, a year that we were gonna support each other. We were gonna try to do as well as we could uh, in our academic work. Some were a lot smarter than me, but I also was determined that this year I was going to graduate from Central. The uh, principal of the school told me at one point along the way that um, I didn't have to come to the ceremony and they would mail me my diploma. And I thought, listen, I didn't go through all this to uh, pass up the, uh, the ceremony. Maybe the, the world thought that after Little Rock, everything is going to be fixed. And one of the important pieces, I'm, I'm sure I don't need it to remind anyone that the history of slavery in this country makes it very difficult to overcome a lot of issues on race. We're a long way from being perfect, but we certainly are not what we were when I started out. I, I believe that our participation at Central is one of those many steps that's gone to change this country for the better. As we just learned from Ernest Green, which was one of those Little Rock Nine students, so obviously he's older now, and that video wasn't even um, that long ago. So that video was about two or three years ago when he was able to say what happened when he was going to high school into that um, high school that was mainly um, for white people. And he was one of those nine African-American students who were able to go to that school and had to go to the, through, through those things. Um, and so that's why I say some of your grandparents or even great grandparents are people who seen um, this separate but, uh, but equal um, lifestyle. And obviously it wasn't equal at that time, but just knowing that it wasn't that long ago, like people who are alive still went through these different things and just making sure that you guys are remembering that. And also knowing that for, 
for a, a long time, black people weren't able to go to school or get it, get an education. And that's because um, people in our country during that time didn't want us to be successful. So we need to know that our education and our knowledge is power because they were trying to keep us from getting those things because they wanted us to stay um, not smart. Now the school and education is given to you guys, but you need to be the person who takes a hold of your education and make sure that you want it, make sure you're listening to your teachers, making sure that you're practicing your letters and sounds, making sure that you're practicing reading words, making sure that you are learning new vocabulary, learning um, subtraction, learning addition, learning division, learning multiplication, learning everything. Because um, at one point, people didn't want you guys and they would do anything to stop you guys from learning. I have a dream speech. Send you all your videos to cjennings at kipschicago.org. You're going to say, uh, start off saying, I have a dream that you're going to say whatever you want. It could be as small as things that you want to change inside of your house or as big as changing things that are in the world. And we'll be able to see this compromise of all these videos at the end of the month. And I can't wait to see what you guys submit. If you don't uh, remember the examples, go into our last video for last week and see some of those examples. You're simply just going to say, I have a dream that, and then put whatever you have a dream that to change our world. All right. Catch you guys next week. Um, love learning with you guys.